Hi everyone, I'm doing my reflection today on this book, Stormy Omation, and she's, I think she's a South African writer, and it's a book I got a while ago, it's a second-hand book. I buy my book second-hand because I'm a slow reader, so sometimes I'll put a book down and I'll pick it up six months later, so I buy my book second-hand, and this is a signed copy of hers. So today I did the chapter on when I long to know God's will. So for me, like, not like many, but like some people, um, for the whole of my life, I've struggled financially. And it's very um, upsetting and it's very demoralizing to have to take money from people. When you are capable of working, you're capable of holding a full-time job and you have good skills to offer, you know how to think, you know how to resolve problems, you know what your boundaries are. It's very, for me, very, very upsetting. And especially to have invested so much in my education and to not get the breaks, not get the jobs. And so today I focused on this chapter and always she takes us back to praising God and asking in this chapter she talks about asking God for wisdom and asking him for his guidance because in Ecclesiastes 7 19 it says wisdom strengthens the wise and that's true when we are wise when we try to make wise decisions God strengthens us because on our own we are not wise but we have to understand God's will and we have to understand when to be compassionate and when to help. And so that's what I focused on today and focusing on Isaiah and the scripture from Isaiah because it says wisdom is good for an inheritance and profitable to those who see the sun. For wisdom is a defense as money is a defense, but the excellence of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those who have it. And that's in Ecclesiastes 7, 11 to 12. So sometimes wisdom comes in a flash. Stormy talks about how wisdom can come like turning on a light bulb. And other times wisdom comes slowly through a learned experience. And especially when you're an immigrant, you don't have people to guide you, to help you, to say this is the way to go. And so for us, especially for me as a woman who's had interactions with the police through no fault of my own, it's left me very nervous. I try to deal with the police as little as possible. Unless, if, like if I was working with them, it'd be different. But I'm a civilian, and so I know my boundaries, I know my role in life, and I know that what I have to do is to be aware of the situation. Sometimes we make situational decisions and we have to do them based on what we feel would be the best thing for ourselves and the others involved in the situation. And so asking God for that wisdom, asking God for that guidance was my prayer today and asking God to help me to keep my tenderness, to keep my sweetness and to keep my love for God, not to let the trials of life bear me down and destroy my faith and destroy my love. And so anybody can do that. You can do it whether you're a Christian or Muslim or Hindu, you can ask God for that guidance. For me, I focus on Jesus. Jesus is my way, my truth and my life. And for us, we believe that Jesus is the way to heaven. We don't follow any other teachings. We see the light in other teachings, we know there's wisdom in other teachings, but we follow Jesus, whether we are women or men. And I think it's interesting that when Jesus did his call, he focused only on the men. Maybe at that time it was more common for the women to be in the temple, to be serving, to hold positional power. We only have scant knowledge from the scriptures, but we know that women were equal in power to the men. Whether you look at kings and queens, whether you look at Pontius Pilate and his wife, whether you look at the deaconesses in the Bible, 
And I think Jesus, those teachings were there to emphasize the role of the men coming up in the church. Because Mary Magdalene was the one that went back and she gave the good news to the disciples. Not that they believed her, just like many men today. You tell them something and they're like, oh no, she's a woman. Must be in her head. They don't believe you. So they had to go and see for themselves and Thomas had to put his arm or his hand into Christ's side. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying that when you look at the role that the women played in the Bible and you look at the role of Sarah, you look at the role of Rehab, you look at the role of many women in the Bible, they, pay, they played important roles and those roles are not given enough emphasis and enough credit, at least in, not in our Catholic Church. And I'm not saying that leadership is not hard, it is very hard. But at the same time, there are women who want to hold those positional powers in the church. Not necessarily me. I, I, I have enough with being a spiritual director. Because even when I go to the church, I know there's a lot of people that follow me on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. And I hear the priest telling them, she's doing it for the women. I am doing it for the women, but I'm doing it for the men as well. When I lived in Trinity House in South Africa, we were co-ed. Men and women lived together. And in a way that was comforting for us because we as women knew we had the strength of the men there if we needed them. And the men knew they had our softness. We cooked together, we bought our groceries together, we watched the rugby together, we prayed together, we made the burgers after mass together to raise money for our community. So that's the African culture, and it's very different to here. I'm not saying it's the same as here, but it's very different. And so today that's what I focused on, because some days it is very hard for me, because I've been living off my overdraft for many, many years now. And every time I get a little bit of money, something else comes up, some big expense like my taxes or something that I need to replace and I can't buy a condo of my own. I can't buy a place of my own. So it's very frustrating for me and it's very disappointing for me. And probably for a lot of women in Canada that go through it who are single, who can't get good paying jobs, who can't rise up through the ranks or who have like me minimum wage. And it's harder for women. I don't care what the men say, it's harder for women still in this day and age. So I try to focus on that. I try to ask God, please show me the way, keep me on the right path and please help me. And that's what I do because that's where I get my strength from. Not to say that I don't cry or I don't have a meltdown, but I carry on. The next day I pick myself up, I put a smile on my face and you can hear it. Even my supervisors tell me, Susan Osborne, she tells me, when I listen to your calls, I can always hear the smile in your, in your voice. And I say to her, yeah, I try to smile. I try to be grateful that I've got a job. It might not be the best paying job, but at least it's, it's a job where I know I'm appreciated by my supervisors and I'm valued. So that makes a huge difference for me. And today you see all the banks, you see how many layoffs there are, how many people are being let go. It seems to be a cycle because they'll do it over and over and over. And the same thing keeps happening. They keep recruiting the same kind of person. They keep recruiting the same type of mentality. And that's how it goes. But anyway, I give thanks for the good things. I give thanks for the rugby. I give thanks that nobody got hurt, that it was a successful event, there were no incidents. And I watch all these demonstrations that are taking place with Palestine and Israel, more so in, in England compared to here. There's a lot of demonstrations. But anyway, people say, oh, the Palestinians suffered, but the Israelis also suffered. The Israelis were also visible minorities. The Israelis also went through their hard times and the Holocaust. 
and we can't forget about one side and only remember the other side. You can't have terrorist groups striking civilians and then say, oh, well, no, it doesn't work that way. And I've always stood my ground when it comes to Israel. And I will continue to stand my ground. And maybe that will mean like what's happened to me in Canada. I don't get the breaks. I don't get the opportunities. Maybe that's part of it. I really don't know. But I put my faith in Christ, in Jesus Christ. And that's where my faith will remain. It's not in talisman. It's not in the sacramentals I use. The sacramentals are there to remind me, to help me. To strengthen my faith there are certain medals that I have like the Maria Stellis medal when the, it reminds me to go to Our Lady in the turbulence of life and that's what I do and that's what I hope will give me strength to persevere and to come through this because I want the money I want to earn well and I want to have money of my own and that's why I went to university that's why I studied that's why I guide the students from here in South Africa, the SRC. When there's problems on campus, I tell them to tone it down, to find a middle ground, to work together. Don't destroy bits, don't destroy the buildings. And they appreciate me. I might be on the other side of the world, but they appreciate me just like the leadership adverts appreciate me, which is not something I can say about Canada. Maybe at Regis College, sometimes I'll get an invite here and there, but it's not the same. It's, it's not the same because I'm here, I'm willing to help Regis, I'm willing to work at the college, but I don't get selected. So anyway, that's how it goes. And that's my prayer that God keeps me on the true north, on the right path, that that morning star, star will guide me and will protect me.